What's up guys, William Video Brown coming at you and today we're gonna to be working on a lion's mane extract. I wanna give a big shout out to the Good Life Gang for uh, making this video possible. Um, and we're gonna get right to it. So we have some dried lion's mane. Uh, this lion's mane was dried about a year ago. Um, you're gonna to wanna to work with the freshest material you possibly can, um, but I didn't want this material to go to waste so that's why I'm gonna be working with this today. Um, so we have our lion's mane that we um, either grow ourselves, we forage or we uh, source from local farms. And with the amount of mushroom cultivators that are growing around the world, there should be um, decent access to um, lion's mane at least because of how popular this mushroom is becoming. Um, before we dehydrate the mushrooms, we do rip it into small pieces and then we dehydrate at a low temperature um, under 120 degrees um, until it is at a nice crisp um, dryness. And we store, we store in glass jars um, and it, it's helpful to put silica packets in here because um, the lion's mane are pretty um, inclined to absorb moisture out of the air. So um, airtight jar, silica, uh, silica pack in there if you can to keep your mushrooms nice and fresh um, while they're dry. Um, so what we're gonna do next is we're going to create more surface area with our material. Um, so we're gonna drop it into a food processor and try and get this broken up a little bit more um, so that when we rinse it with the alcohol, we can get the alcohol to touch as many of these cells in the mushroom as we possibly can. All right guys, so we've got our lion's mane all processed and into fine particles. If you can get it any finer, go for it. Um, just realize that if you get it down to a powder, it's gonna be a little bit harder to filter it out once you get to the, uh, the, the stage after you extract the uh, oils from the material. There we have it, a really nice grind. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get this into the magical butter machine. So I'm not sure if I mentioned, but we have two ounces of dry material here. We're gonna drop our two ounces in. And we're going to add 600 mils of ethanol. And this is 75% just because I live in Pennsylvania. If you can get 95% where you live, I would recommend getting a higher percentage because we are gonna have, we are gonna have to deal with the fact that there is about 35% water in here or 25% water in here. All right, guys, I'm gonna set the lid on here. Make sure everything is attached. You can hear a beep. And then I'm going to go ahead and set the temperature to 130 degrees Fahrenheit or 54 degrees Celsius. And then I'm going to set the machine to run for four hours for the tincture setting. All right, so after this is done, it's run. It'll still be a little bit warm, so you might want to use this little glove that comes with the magic butter machine. And you can see the lion's mane is just all ground up in there. It's like pulverized, um, so we're gonna need to filter our extract away from all of the uh, fruiting body material that's in there. All right, so I'm gonna pour the um, extract with the fruiting body still in it into this 190 uh, micron filter um, that came with this uh, magical butter machine. All right, now I'm going to kind of tie off the top of this bag and uh, squeeze my little squishy ball of lion's mane fruiting bodies to get the rest of this alcohol extract out of it. This is the leftover um, lion's mane fruiting body. Um, this material can be composted. Um, 
Just keep in mind, it's full. It's still full of alcohol. So we have our flask here. Um, it has a attachment on the side so I can attach this hose. And I'm gonna attach the hose to the vacuum on the source. This will pull a vacuum into the flask. Um, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your uh, hose isn't touching that little heating element because that heating element will turn on even though there's no, even though the whole setup is not on. Um, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to take my ceramic funnel uh, with the rubber attachment and insert it into my flask, nice and snug. And I'm first going to take one of my fast flow filters and I'm going to run our extract in solution through one of these fast flow filters. Um, what you're gonna wanna make sure that you do is pour a little bit of ethanol on the filter prior to pulling the vacuum and make sure it's fully saturated. If you don't do this, whenever you pull your extract through, it'll just try and go through wherever is the path of least resistance, which might not be through the filter. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to pull vacuum on the filter. All right. Now that I have a nice vacuum on the filter, I'm gonna go ahead and pour our extract from upstairs into the fast flow filter. Give it a nice little spin. And this will help filter out particulates. Um, and we're gonna go through a smaller filter to filter out any other like waxes or anything like that, fats that might be in there that's not the, uh, concentrated oil compounds that we want from in there. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this out. You can see there's like some particulates in there. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this out to receive the clean material before we run it through the next filter. So what I'm thinking right now is that this filter is pretty clogged up, um, but I think we'll be able to get everything pulled through it, hopefully without, pull, without uh, pulling a hole through one of them. Yeah, it's just gonna go slow for a little bit. It's definitely a little jammed up. All right, so we just turned off the vacuum. I'm going to remove the ceramic funnel and you can see in there all the particulates and impurities that uh, came through the filter. Yeah, look at that. So now I'm gonna clean this out with a little bit of iso, isopropyl alcohol. Get out anything that might go on around the sides. Make sure all the holes are clean. And set that there. I'm now gonna take this first filtered product and pour it into the clean flask. I'll give it one little quick rinse of ethanol to make sure any particulates that might be in there are cleaned out. And I'm gonna put the filter back in there. And now I'm gonna go ahead for a slow flow. Same like I did with the fast flow filter, I'm going to pour a little bit of ethanol on there. Make sure it is completely saturated. And 
When it is completely saturated, I will now pull my vacuum. Wait until it's completely sealed. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and pour this in for a slow filtration. I'm gonna remove the ceramic filter. And this one, I mean, you can see there is some particulate and impurities that we pulled out, not as much as the last one. And now we're ready to uh, recover our ethanol. All right, I'm just gonna pour this until it's a little bit below the fill line here. This way, whenever, if it splashes, it doesn't splash up and contaminate our ethanol. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up the machine for ethanol recovery. I'm gonna put this rubber piece here. I'm going to set the ethanol recovery tank on. And now I'm gonna screw the crucible onto the heating element. I'm gonna put the lid on and I'm gonna close the vacuum and run it. I'm holding my hand on this um, just to help it pull a vacuum. Um, usually doesn't take that long. Once it pulls a vacuum, you'll notice that you'll, you'll hear the vacuum turn off and then it'll just start clicking and that's just the heating element. Um, usually I have to run it for two sessions to get uh, all the ethanol back out and recover the oil from the material. So now that it's starting to get a nice vacuum on it, I'm gonna go ahead and put this little dish of cold water on the top. And what this does is it helps the alcohol recondense after it evaporates out of the crucible so that it can pour back down on the sides. And uh, we'll get back to you when we're ready to recover the uh, extract. All right guys, so now we have our recovered ethanol here in the source. Um, I'm going to take off our dish with our cold water on the top. Um, some of the extract did splash on the top so you can see there is a little bit of a tint in our recovered ethanol, that is okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn the knob on the front to open and release the vacuum. Slowly, so I don't splash a bunch of ethanol around in there. I don't spl splash the extract around in there too much. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and remove this and try not to get any ethanol into the extract. I'm going to turn off my fan. And while this is still nice and warm, I'm gonna go ahead and pour my extract. You can see there's still a little bit of ethanol in here, but I wanna pour it while there's still a little bit of ethanol and then let it air dry. All right, if you haven't had, if you haven't worked with your extract before, if you're working with a new mushroom or a new plant, I definitely recommend pouring it out when there's still a little bit of ethanol in it. Um, because if you don't know what the extract's gonna be like, it might be a little bit tarry um, and it might be a little bit hard to get out of your crucible. So I definitely recommend pouring it out with a little bit of extra ethanol in it for the first time when you're experimenting with new extracts. Um, and I'm gonna let this air dry in front of my HEPA air filter um, so that it doesn't get any particulates in it while it's drying. Um, if you don't have a HEPA air filter, that's fine. Um, you're just gonna wanna dry it somewhere where there's not a lot of 
um, dust floating around in the air or uh, just get a, a nice little room air filter. Uh, so what I'm doing right now is I'm kind of um, giving it a little bit more surface area so that when I put it in front of the HEPA filter to dry, uh, it'll dry up a little bit faster. All right, so now I'm recovering my ethanol so I can make more extracts with it. And you can see there's a little tint in there. Um, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna use this again for lines main, I'm gonna not be too particular about it. Um, but if I wanna use it again for something else, what I can do is I can put this ethanol into the crucible here and run it back through the source. Um, and then it'll clean up my ethanol just a little bit more for me. Thanks for tuning in guys. Uh, I wanna give another big shout out to Good Life Gang for helping this video come together. Uh, shouts out to Dustin. And uh, you know, there's a lot to learn um, because there hasn't been, haven't been as many people with their attention focused on mushroom extracts. Um, we're still, we still have a lot to play with and experiment with to figure out how to make the most pure extracts um, and figure out the best delivery methods for them as well. So I'm really excited to get this video out there for you guys and have more of you guys experimenting and playing around with these mushroom extracts. Um, we can, there's so many different methods we can integrate from the cannabis industry um, into mushroom extraction industry and work with, I think the biggest next step would be to work with the analytical laboratories um, to figure out what ex exactly in these mushroom extracts um, and what levels they are toxic at. Because unlike cannabis, um, some of these mushrooms may become toxic at a concentrated levels. Um, so we wanna make sure that we're also doing this in a safe manner. Um, so uh, remember that this is an experimental science um, and just be safe as we do it and have fun. Um, so yeah, this is William Padilla Brown checking out. Peace. Yeah. <laughs>